World War II, you were in the service for 21 years. Wow. Okay. I spent it all flying. You spent it all flying. Wow. Okay. Just to get started, I just wanted you, Nick, I, um, to introduce yourself to the community. Talk, uh, give us your name and talk about your years of service in the military. I'm, uh, you want me to hold that? I'll, I'll hold oh, it. Okay. Uh, well, what did you say? I'm, oh, I'm, I'm, oh, yeah, just so you could say I'm Nick Sanchez. Just uh, introduce yourself, talk about you know, how many years you serve in the military, and then we'll ask some more questions. My name is Ignacio Nick Sanchez. I was tw I've spent 21 years in the service flying on B-17s during the war. I made 21 missions, combat missions. I was on the ball turret gunner. And then after that, I, I got out for a year and nine months, but I went back in, went into flying on B-29s and B-50s, and then I went into air refueling. And uh, 135s were the last ones that I flew on, but I spent it all flying the military, so. Wow, 21 years and many, many missions, flying combat. Bring us back. What was that like to, to be to do that? Oh, I, well, being as young as I was at the time that I went in, it wasn't. It's all experience. I was just a little old country boy, you know, just didn't know any better, I guess. <laughs> so I, when they sent me to fly, B, fly on B-17s, I thought, I thought, well, oh, that's great. I didn't know what I was getting into. And once I got into it, it just a matter of, you, you get scared. You do get scared, but I, I don't remember getting really being, you know, because I, uh, I went in, I went into in, in May, May of '44. I went overseas, and I got into the bomb group, the 305th bomb group, and, and uh, my, my uh, airplane was GI Miss America. And, uh, I flew, I flew to. Uh, we, we supported the ground troops two times. One time we supported the American troops, which was a disaster really for the Americans because they were supposed to put smoke bombs out there to show their line where their line was at, you know. So there was a strong wind and started blowing the smoke back. So when we, we went over, we naturally bombed where the smoke was at, you know. And we ended up bombing, bombing our own troops. That's where General McNair, he got killed on that one. So. We killed our own our own people, but not. And then the next, the next one we went to to support our troops was the British. We went to support the British, and, uh, and we f we have to fly pretty low there because 13,000 feet. That's low, and uh, we lost a lot of airplanes. A lot of people were lost in there. One of the toughest ones that I remember, the one that really we went to Con, and uh, we lost 72 B-17s, and then we lost. Seven. 50, 51 P-51s. So it was a really, really bad time. On one of my missions that I remember, in fact, one of the missions that we flew low to support our troops, I felt a big jolt on my back, and I, I just kind of felt and didn't think nothing of it until I turned my back towards our props, and I felt a cold chill, and I looked back, and I lost my door. My, my hatch was blown off. So that was a big scare. And then that one time that uh, we, we lost two engines and uh, number two caught fire. So we had to take, put the airplane on a, di on a dive to blow out the, the flames. And we finally did about, after we got to about 15,000 feet, we finally got it out. It took, uh, took both pilots of all their power to try to straighten the airplane out. So. And we had, and then another one. We uh, we were flying number two on the element, as an element is three. And we were flying on the right wing, and the lead airplane got hit real bad, so he had to come off. He left that formation, and then we took his place. No sooner did we take his place, we got hit, so we had to get off. And so we followed the other guy back home. He got hit before we got to the, to the North Sea. He got hit again, and. Uh, Finally, they, they just couldn't keep it up, and so they had to bail, they bail out, and then well, they bailed out, and then the plane, the plane flew, blew, off, blew up, and one, only one guy made it out. And uh, I talked to the guy that got out, and uh, he was telling me that uh, after he hit the water, he, uh, he was, because there's a lot of British out there, uh, 
looking for people, flyers that go down, see. So they finally got to him about 30 minutes. But he said the only thing he had left to wave so they could catch him was his shorts. He was completely naked. Just, and you know, the North Sea, the water is cold. He looked like, when I thought, when I seen him, he looked like a, like me, 90 year old man now. <laughs> No, you look amazing, and you're just incredible all you did for this country, and I want to thank you. You have your grandkids here, your family. I'm sure they always want you to keep telling them about the stories. But what is your real message today, especially to this generation, about just obviously, the, you know, what the role that you all played out there and, and the importance of, you know, remembering about the B-17? Well, I kind of say that uh, all these treat these, like, like I say, when I got home at the time, when I got home, People didn't even know I was gone. I have been gone. The only thing I got was when I, I, I got a cab to go home, and when I tried to pay the cab driver, he wouldn't take the money. And then I teased my wife and my kids. I tell them, I says, that, uh, I, says I didn't even get a kiss. The only kiss I got is because I had to ask for it from my wife. <laughs> well, we were just boyfriend and girlfriend. Then. <laughs> well, you have seven kids now. They're all here, and they're excited to uh, see you go up. Are you looking forward to going up? Oh yeah, I, I just I can I can picture what I'm going to feel like. I guess I guess it's going to be sentimental. I, I'm, I think mostly I am going to think about my, my radio operator. He used to call me Iggy. He, he couldn't say Ignacio, so he called me Iggy. So I, he always used to tell me. I said I'll take care of you. Don't worry about it. He says he he said he used to tell me if you don't go, I don't go. If you go, I go. He meant. He, he would never be allowed him without me. So is this the first time you're going up again in a B-17 since you flew how many years ago? Ooh, I got, I got, I got back. I, I came home in February of 45. So this should be exciting and emotional, like you say. Yeah, oh, yeah, it's going to be, it's going to be. I know, I, 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 I can't even tell you how I'm going to feel <laughs> until I get back. <laughs> and what was your actual title in the military? So I have that to put under your name. What you were a, you were, what was your actual title? Like, I was a ball, tur ball turret gunner, on one on the bottom. So, so what did that involve when you were being a ball turret gunner? What, what was it like for you up there? What were you doing? Well, I was just, I was, well, I was just a regular gunner, just a regular gunner. I stayed in that position for eight, nine hours, whatever the mission was. You stayed in that cramped position. You couldn't move. You couldn't even take your parachute in there. You know, we have, we have chest chutes. I couldn't even carry this how how small it is in there. I, a good thing that I was the size I was because I, I don't know how I would have done it in there. So, but, uh, it was quite an experience. But I get to see all the show, though. Bombardier, Bombardier used to show, tell me, he said, show me in the map where he, they wanted a bomb, you know, what they wanted to hit. And so when I, I point my guns towards the bomb bay and I watch the bombs go down and I watch and see where they hit and then I tell him, I said, it's about where they hit or something like that. So, but I got to see all this show. I'm really excited to be able to go up and honored to go up w with you on this flight. Any tips for me? I've never been in one of these aircrafts. <laughs> oh, it's kind of a lot of noise. It's not going to be like this airlines, believe me. You're going to be in for a, for a little shock, I think. <laughs> no one's going to be bring, coming by with a bag of peanuts and a Diet Coke. <laughs> no. Well, thank you. You yeah. enjoy. Okay, thank okay you. and I'm going to spell it's Nick Sanchez, S-A-N-C-H-E-Z, and you're with the U.S. Air Force. 305th bomb group. 305th bomb group. So you're with the 305th bomb group. Okay, Mark? Is that okay? Does it sound good? Yep.